Senator Klobuchar. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Director Ray, for being here. Um, I want to start out with uh, hate crimes. Uh, you and I have talked about them before. Um, I have, I know, thanked you and your agents in Minnesota for their work in solving what was a clear hate crime uh, the, with a prison sentence of a uh, bombing of Dar al Farouk. Uh, Islamic Center in my home state back in 2017. Um, and we know that since that time, we've seen increases in hate crimes. Our reports show a 216% increase since October 7 in re requests for help and reported bias incidents against mi Muslims. Another report uh, showed a 388% rise in anti-Semitic incidents um, since this time last year. Um, we know the facts. We know what happened in front of that restaurant in Philadelphia. We know that in Illinois, a six-year-old Muslim boy was targeted and fatally stabbed for being Palestinian American. In Los Angeles, a criminal broke into the home of a Jewish family, threatened them, and screamed about killing Jews. In Vermont, a Palestinian student from Brown University, whose parents had him stay in the U.S. rather than returning home, for safety reasons, was shot along with two of its friends. In New York, a woman was assaulted at Grand Central Terminal, and when confronted, the assailant said it was because you are Jewish. In Brooklyn, a father and his 18-year-old son were allegedly assaulted by another parent for being Palestinian. And last week, three suspects were arrested for a 40-minute spree of attacks on, Philadelphia, on, on Jewish New Yorkers. Um, this is concerning for everyone, should everyone, Democrat, Republican, Jewish, Muslim, Christian, anyone in this country. I know that uh, you care about this very much because I saw the work that your agents did in Minnesota. And I want to get more details on what the FBI is doing and what the Justice Department is doing to detect, deter, and investigate these crimes. And then also um, the effect of social media. Um, and I know there are limitations on what we can do. I have some strong views on this. Um, but um, could you also talk about that? Well, I appreciate your longstanding interest in this topic. Um, and I know how important it is to you, uh, and not the least of which because of the attacks that have occurred in, in your home state. Uh, certainly, uh, we have seen an increase um, in hate crimes. Uh, and there are lots of different numbers out there, but I'll just give two for, for this purpose. Uh, you know, one is in 2022, we saw the highest increase, I think, in hate crimes reported that we'd seen since maybe 2008. Uh, and we don't have full data for 2023 yet, but we expect it to keep going up. Second data point, post-October 7th, just since October 7th, we have opening, uh, I think, 60% more hate crimes investigations post-October 7th than compared to the comparable period pre-October 7th. And that's on top of that already escalating increase that I mentioned. Uh, as I testified in my opening statement, uh, the biggest chunk of those uh, uh, are threats against the Jewish community. But there are, of course, attacks, and you mentioned several of them, against others uh, as well. Uh, what are we doing about it? A, a few different things. We've elevated uh, civil rights, especially hate crimes, to national threat priority, and that's been true for the last couple of years, and so that uh, brings with it more investigative resources uh, of all shapes and, and sizes. Uh, second, we're trying to do a lot to, um, to engage in outreach, both to law enforcement and the communities, because the one thing we know about hate crimes is that they're chronically underreported. Uh, and there are lots of reasons for that. But so trying to get better data, better fidelity uh, of the data allows us to track the trend better, but also to ensure that we're finding the cases that need to be pursued. Uh, even when uh, a hate crimes charge, a federal hate crimes charge is not available, the FBI doesn't just walk away from the case. We provide forensic support, uh, in some cases even testimony and other things in state prosecutions if state charges are being used. So those are a few of the things. Uh, in our outreach efforts, I would say we, we also uh, have tried to do things that are targeted at specific communities. Uh, so for example, in New York, uh, we uh, tried to reach out to parts of the Jewish community in New York with uh, 
with outreach both in, in Yiddish uh, and Hebrew and not just in English, for example. So that's just a, a flavor. Thank you. I um, wanted to turn to um, fentanyl. Um, we all know that there is so much work that has to be done on the border and so much work that has to be done in um, the ports of entry. Um, mail, a bill that Senator Portman and I passed a while back. Um, but we also know that one third of drug cases um, have direct ties to social media. And uh, we had a kid in Minnesota who died after taking fentanyl-laced pill uh, that he thought was Percocet uh, to help his migraines, purchased on Snapchat. Um, and the Judiciary Committee actually voted with the chairman's leadership to advance a bipartisan bill with um, Senator Shaheen and Marshall to require social media companies to report fentanyl and other dangerous drug sales on their platforms. Uh, it's called the Cooper Davis Act. And could you talk about how this could be helpful um, in taking on these cases? Well, I think what you've put your finger on is the degree to which uh, uh, online activity is, is inextricably intertwined with the fentanyl epidemic. Uh, and that's in a variety of ways. Uh, and I know Administrator Milgram at DEA, for example, has a number of initiatives focused on this as well. Um, certainly, we, uh, on the FBI's end, uh, are focused on, for example, darknet uh, marketplaces, and we have a whole, something called J-Code, which is focused on dismantling darknet marketplaces uh, of fentanyl and other dangerous uh, narcotics. Okay, thank you. And one other um, kids issue, you noted the importance of protecting kids. Um, uh, you noted in your written testimony that the FBI has recently reported a massive increase in sex extortion cases where kids and teens are being coerced into sending explicit photos and videos only to be blackmailed or threatened for financial gain. Um, in 2022 alone, these scams resulted in at least 20 victims committing suicide. And my bill with Senator Cornyn, uh, the SHIELD Act, uh, includes a threat provision and other things that would update and modernize our laws when it comes to revenge porn and um, sex extortion cases involving kids. Um, while um, we are advancing this bill, um, sadly, we have been uh, opposed by some members of this committee. And I found it incredibly frustrating because they won't meet with me to try to make any changes to it, and I'm trying to change that. Um, what threats uh, do young people uh, receive? How do you think um, we could make the tools that you have to take on this crime better? Because I'm going to just start going to the floor and taking this on. Our colleagues can object if they would like. Uh, with, um, and I know Senator Cornyn has been very helpful, but I think it's just absolutely ridiculous when you look at these numbers. Please answer. Thank you. Well, I, I, I can't speak to specific legislative proposals, but what I can tell you is that sextortion uh, is, is a rapidly escalating threat. Uh, and as you say, there have been way too many teenagers victimized and they don't know where to turn. Uh, and so uh, having this discussion in a forum like this, uh, people like you and Senator Cornyn raising awareness about it, that by itself is hugely valuable. As to what we need, I will tell you, I come back to the answer I gave earlier uh, to Chairman Durbin about the, uh, the threat, if you will, of the proliferation of warrant-proof encryption. If companies are going to take um, responsibility for what happens on their platforms, then part of taking responsibility includes the ability to, when presented with a warrant, following all the due process that that entails, they will provide the information so that law enforcement, not just FBI, but other agencies can take action to rescue the kids and take down the predators. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. I'll ask my remaining questions on carjacking and uh, 702, which I thank you for your work on that. Uh, we can't let it lapse uh, in writing. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Cornyn.